The Navy's troubled new supercarrier has yet another problem, this time with its nuclear power plant system. The news comes along with the revelation that USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, will spend three extra months in dry dock as part of an extended maintenance and rework period, not returning to the fleet in any condition until at least sometime in October of 2019. The propulsion issues are in addition to a slew of other problems the carrier is facing. Collectively, they call into question when the ship will be ready for actual operational service at all. Ford's latest woes and the delay were first reported by U.S. Naval Institute News Sam Legrone. His report details how Ford's power plant was the source of an engineering casualty that resulted in the ship returning to port during a shakedown sortie. Apparently, the issue is with the ship's steam turbines, not with the nuclear reactors that drive them, but could be systemic in nature. Lagrone writes, Problems with the propulsion system are less understood publicly. The problem isn't resident in the two nuclear reactors aboard but rather the ship's main turbines generators that are driven by the steam the reactors produce. Sources familiar with the extent of the repairs have told U.S. Naval Institute News, two of the main turbine generators needed unanticipated and extensive overhauls. As Schertz told Congress, the ship's company discovered the problem during sea trials. In May, Ford returned to port early after it suffered an engineering casualty during an underweight ahead of the post-shakedown availability. The initial 12-month post-shakedown availability was designed to fix any problems that arose during the carrier's first at-sea period, when the crew works the ship hard to help identify any problems in construction, as well as to tackle any work that the Navy and shipbuilder agreed to bump from the construction period to post-shakedown availability. The carrier had planned to conduct a one-year post-shakedown availability, then work up with its crew and deploy in 2021. The report comes as the Navy is planning to bet even more heavily on the less-than-ready-for-combat Ford class design by purchasing two additional carriers in a block by and retiring the USS Harry S. Truman, CVN-75, with half its design life still ahead of it. Truman needs to receive its long-planned complex overhaul to realize its full service life. Under the Navy's plan, that operation would be cancelled and relatively young supercarrier, it was commissioned in 1998, would be retired. This will eventually result in the U.S. Navy carrier force dropping to 10 carrier instead of the congressionally mandated 11. With ongoing issues with the ship's arresting gear, catapults, radar system, weapons elevators, and more, and now its power plant, it's not clear when Ford will be truly ready for operations. It has already been delayed significantly and this that is due to major developmental problems. Facing the challenge of meeting its operational design objectives is a whole other level of challenge altogether. Meanwhile, the second and third ships in the class, USS John F. Kennedy, CVN-79, and USS Enterprise, CVN-80, are already well under construction and slated to enter service in 2024 and 2028, if everything goes as planned. And now, with the block by, 
Another Ford class hull is under contract, the as yet to be named CVN81. So, the Ford program has to get on track. These ships have to work and generate air sorties as intended. If they are not fully capable, they will blow a hole in the Navy's ability to project power in the years to come. So, the Ford program has to get on track. These ships have to work and generate air sorties as intended. If they are not fully capable, they will blow a hole in the Navy's ability to project power in the years to come. particular type of maintenance and that goes up to I believe it's our PCS time making sure we, we know what's going on before we isolate it but we uh we haven't had it but we've uh, we haven't had major issues but we had to uh, isolate one catapult to continue sir uh, on the last day uh, uh when we got to our 700 rounds and the way to optimize the system so when we're talking and comparing to different systems sir. So you want to talk about from a sailor's perspective from a Navy's perspective Mark it's easier to maintain the maintenance aspect of it is going to be in that process um, the only thing we really got to maintain is the cable itself, the life term of that, and then a couple of these other. Did the uh, light goes past this, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They, they actually, the, the runway test site actually had to talk with the fuel, a different D cell than with the uh, lower class. It's a less. Uh, this system just needs to know tighter. Oh. Uh, and so, and, and the amount of energy, uh, the amount of energy that can be dissipated by the Thank you very much. 